Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video tutorial. I made a video a couple of months ago on how to create a file upload server. And one of my viewers asked me how to create a file download server or how you go about making those files downloadable. So in this tutorial, that's what we're going to look at. We'll be building this example here and it gives you a select box to choose an image and then you hit download and then you're able to download that image. So all these images are on the server. We list all these images in this select field so that you can select them and download it. All right, let's begin. I've got a project here bootstrapped using the stagehand tool. Specifically, I bootstrapped a console simple application by doing stagehand and then console simple that'll generate the files and folders you need and then you'd run pubget to update your packages so i've gone ahead and done all that and i created this upload folder with a couple of images that we're going to be using in this example over here i go to main.dart file under the bin directory and i've removed everything in there and i've imported two packages so I've imported that.io and I've imported the MIME package. Now this I installed by setting that in my passpec.yaml under dependencies. I added a dependency here. This is already set when you run the stagehand tool. And this main function is marked as async because I'm going to be using async await syntax. We'll start by creating our web server. Once we've got our server, we'll listen for incoming requests. And then we'll write out a simple response and then close it as such. So let's run this and then that should give us that. Next, we're going to change our response to HTML. We need to set some headers and here we'll set the content type to text HTML and we'll write out our HTML. So I'll use the triple quotes for a multi-line string and let's write our HTML. And once we've got our HTML, let's try and look at that now. Okay, there we go. So the idea is when we click download, the request will be made to the backend with our selected image, and then we'll send it back as a download. And we need to... All right, so now that we've got our HTML, going to restart the server. At this moment, when I hit download, we make a request to our backend and we send the value of this select field, which at the moment is choose image. So we need to fix that. For now, let's list out the images we have in our upload directory. So what I'm gonna do before I create my server, I'm going to define a variable called upload directory, which contains the name of our directory. And then I create another variable called current directory, which contains a directory object pointing to our upload directory. And then I will create a list called images. And then I will loop over each of the files in our directory. So we'll do current directory dot list, which returns a stream of file system entity objects. So in here, we'll just do images dot add. And then we want our file entities uri.path which returns the path to the file so i'll do that and then for now let's just print this out so we know what to expect so if i reload that then it gives us that all right we have our images and that means we can add it to our response so i'll create an option tag and then we will do an images.join and in there we'll pass the closing option tag and then the next opening option tag and then afterwards we'll close it as such so i'll restart the server and reload and now we've got the images listed here so at this point we should be able to select an image hit download and we pass that in our query string to the back end so let's look at how we retrieve the image that we want to download 
In our request handling logic, we will create a query params variable because the form data is sent is sent as a query parameter, which means from there we can retrieve the file we wish to download. And it's called file to download. And this name is from the name we've set to our select field. So at this moment we can check if the file to download is defined. If it's defined, then we'll send that file back as a download or else we'll do the rest of this. And let's move this in there as well. Save that. And then for now, let's just print this out and then I'll close the response. I'll reload, choose an image, hit download. Okay, and we got a download. All right. So at this point, we are going to create a file object containing the file we want to download. And then we're going to do a check that if the file actually exists, then we go ahead and make it downloadable. And this is a future, so we'll do that. So if the file exists, then we'll open the file as a stream by doing file open read. And essentially, we can feed, we can pass that into the response by calling the add stream method. So we can take our file stream here and we need to await on this. And then after all of that, we'll close the response. So let's run this and check it again. Select a file, hit download. Okay. So it's retrieved the file and it's sent it back, but the problem here is it's converting the file into a UTF type string, which is not what we want. So we can resolve that by amending our response headers, specifically the content type header to tell the browser exactly how we wish to create, how we wish to treat this response. So let's do headers.set and then we'll set the content type. And then if you've got the MIME package installed, we are going to use the lookup MIME type function from that package and we'll pass it the path to our file we wish to download. So if I save this and then I run this and reload, then we get this. So the server is sending the file to the browser, but right now all the browser is doing is just displaying the file, which is not what we want. We want to trigger a download operation. To do that, we need to set another header and this header is called content disposition. And the purpose of this header is to indicate whether the content we're sending back is expected to be displayed in line or that content is to be treated as an attachment that can be downloaded and saved locally. So what we want to do is to define the content we're sending back as an attachment and we'll specify a file name here as well. And for now we can call it download jpeg and let's wrap it in double quotes so if i reload select an image hit download then we get this and our file name is right as well so if i click to open and then it downloads the file onto our local machine and then it opens it so we can view it here so we've got a main functionality working. If I do that and I hit download, of course we get a blank screen. Nothing happens because the file will not exist. So what we're gonna do is in the scenario, the file doesn't exist, we can redirect to the root. So I'll set a path to forward slash, and then I'll move this up in there and I'll save this file and I'll restart the server. So let's test this out. Select an image that exists, it triggers the download operation. We can open with or save. And then we've got that here. And then I can go choose image, hit download, and nothing happens. Just redirects to the root, which is what we want.
The last thing I'm going to do is when we select a file to download, rather than just saying download, let's use the name of the file itself. And the way we'll do that is over here, we can take the file to download and we'll split from where the slash is, which will create a list containing two items. The first item will be the folder name and the second item will be the name of the file we want. So we just want the last item in there. So I'll save that. I'll restart the server and then I'll select an image, hit download. And there we go. We got the name of the file. I hit OK, downloads it and opens it for us. There's obviously a hyphen one because I've downloaded it before. But yeah, so that works. All right, so this brings me to the end of the tutorial. If you've got any comments, let me know down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any updates. If you've got any feedback, I'm open to it. Thank you.